What's up guys, this is Tampa Tech, and in my previous video, part one, how to fix the TV that has no power, or no standby light on the front of the TV, we discovered that there was five volts going to the main logic board, but the five volts standby voltage was turning on and off. Then we troubleshooted back to the power board, and we discovered that there was a bad transistor, went online, and found that there is a repair kit for this particular model, TV model, and actually other T Samsung TV models that fixes these TVs. It's like a common uh, repair kit that Shop Jimmy puts together that fixes this common issue. And I used their repair kits in the past and I had pretty, m most of the time I had success. I got the repair kit, it came in. Even though I tested the capacitors and they were reading good, it still comes with capacitors because that is a known issue where the capacitor fails and you lose the five volts standby voltage going to the main logic board. But I'm still gonna replace all the parts because these parts are 10 years old and I'm gonna replace them for the newer parts, which makes sense, right? They're here, I paid for it, They're, it was under $20 versus buying the power board, which is around 70 to $80. So you're saving yourself some money, but if you don't have the tools or the skills to fix your TV, you can just order the power board, which comes with the warranty. The repair kit has no warranty. Also in my previous video, um, there was two comments I'm gonna, I'm gonna reply to in, the, in this video. And one was, do I have an electrical engineering degree? And I replied no, but I did go to ITT Tech. Even though ITT Tech did issue me this computer and electronic engineering technology, this is my degree right here. In 2003, I got this. I don't consider it a real engineering degree because for one, it's not accredited school. So if I was gonna go to another school, my credits don't transfer over. Well, Definitely won't transfer over now that ITD Tech is no longer in existence, which really sucks. But my student loan still exists. <laughs> we live and learn. So if I had to do all over, I probably should have went to community college, which is a accredited school. And I could transfer my credits to another school to get a higher you know, education, like a bachelor's degree or master's degree. I ended up getting an associate's degree, ITT Tech. And the tech, um, all the stuff they taught us was, I would say, old information, like five, ten years old. The books were old. The information they were giving us was old. They had filler classes like English and math. You know, I call them filler classes because they fill in. Like you have to take those classes, even though you know, pretty much know that knowledge from high school. You still have to take those classes to get your associate's degree, which is kind of stupid. You should just focus on what your career path is. Those classes. But this is me right here in 2003. But anyhow, long story short, ITD Tech. And I went there to get a better, better education. But in my opinion, I think the best education is work experience, uh, on-job on training. And of course, you can learn a lot from YouTube online and other tutorials online, which is all current information, it's not old. You know, to publish a book for a school, that takes a process, you know, a year or two. So by the time it's published and distributed throughout the schools, that's already old information because technology moves so fast. But anyhow, I want to um, respond to my other question posted in my previous video. And he said, hey, when you're troubleshooting, uh, try to um, plug in the TV and then unplug the power board from the main board and see if the backlight turns on. And I forgot to do that. I knew that was a thing, but I just forgot to do that. And that's really great advice. So that's what we're gonna try right now. And so we're gonna plug in the TV. Okay, this is my meter right here. And the TV's plugged in. Oh, actually, you know what? He said unplug the power board cable to the main logic board, then plug in the power. And if the backlight turns on, then the power board most likely is good. It could still be bad, I think there's, but most likely I think he said it's good. I have to reread his comment. 
I'll just post it right here in the video. I'll just crop it and post paste it. But uh, let me turn off the lights so I can see if the backlight is on. So right now it's disconnected from the main logic board. So turn off all the lights. Alexa, turn off tech and plug. Okay, so looks like the backlight is on. Does that mean the power board is working? I ordered, I ordered the power board repair kit for nothing. I'm still gonna replace the parts, I don't care. I see, see what happens. All right, so I'll put my black lead on a ground source, which is the chassis of the TV. And I'm gonna read five volts. Which is the third one, I think. I believe it's the third one. All right, so I do have the five volts. I should have done this before. Look at that, I got five volts right there. But I read a bad transistor. And it's steady. Ah, I'm still learning, guys. Before my previous video, I checked the five volts. I was getting five volts, zero, and it drops down to zero. And then five volts again, and it drops down to zero. But what I should have done is then unplugged the power cable going to the main logic board and check the five volts with the cable unplugged from the main logic board. So there's a bad part on the main logic board. And I, with testing ICs, I'm not really familiar checking ICs because I don't have schematics available to me, but I think what's causing the issue is there's a bad part on the main logic board causing the five volts to drop. So here's the TV repair kit right here. What's inside is a coupon and the repair kit right here. And this is the board number. All right, so let's open it up. And it looks like you got a couple transistors right here. This is the board location number. So this number is on the board. That's where you find these transistors. A couple more transistors. And here's the IC. There's the number right here if you need it. That's the IC. And you got some fuses right here. Here's the cap. Here's some more capacitors. These are electrolytic capacitors, which tend to go bad. That's why um, I thought this would work. But uh, this is the location numbers. And the capacitors are 1,000 microfarads, 25 volts. So they, uh, this is actually an upgrade. This TV repair kit not only fixes the issue, but these are upgraded parts to fix whatever you know could go wrong. Because they put in 1,000 microfarads, 10 volt, and a uh, 1,000 microfarads, 25 volt is better because it has a, it can allow higher voltage to pass through the capacitor without it failing, which was a common issue of uh, older TVs like 10 years, 12 years ago. There's another fuse and more capacitors. And that's it.
All right, I got everything plugged in. The inverter board is plugged into the power board. I got the main logic board plugged into the power board. And let's go ahead and plug in the main power, the power plug. And who's TV still not turning on? Okay, TV and power. Nothing. All right. So now I'm going to check the five volts standby voltage going to the main logic board. I'm going to put my black lead on a ground source, and put my red lead, positive lead, on five volts. And we are getting five volts and then zero and then five volts again probably no I was wrong no five volts back down to zero same results so I didn't have to order the TV repair kit and that part that I thought was shorted wasn't even shorted it was a small part of it, I thought it took it out of circuit when I desoldered it from the board, but I guess there was a small fragment of solder stuck to the terminal and giving me a, a false reading on my meter. So I should have took the part completely out instead of do, uh, being lazy and just desoldering it and thinking that it's out of circuit. I should have troubleshooted further and, you know, and been more and confirm my conclusion, like my troubleshooting. And because I fixed the TV before with the same um, issues, symptoms, with, I got five volts standby voltage and dropped down to zero. That one was actually a bad capacitor or bad capacitors on the power board causing the five volts to drop. And so when I looked at the repair kit at, at the website Shop Jimmy, it just made sense to me to order the repair kit because it had capacitors in that repair kit and had you know the IC the voltage regulator stuff like that the parts in it made sense which uh, will cause the 5 volts to drop and the symptoms in that description of the repair kit said no power so I jumped on that uh, you know as soon as I like you know read that description just to recap is unplug the power unplug the cable going to the main logic board plug it back in the power board and then check your oh see if the backlight turns on if the backlight turns on then the power board is good and the main logic board is most likely bad Alexa turn off tech and plug see the lights shining through the backlight is working so that means the power board is uh, good shout out goes to you great tip thank you for your knowledge I'm learning too as much as you guys as much as I share knowledge, my knowledge with you guys, I can still learn. I'm no expert by any means. People can t definitely teach me, and I am more than well. You know, I welcome that knowledge. I want to learn as much as you guys. Yeah. Okay, five and seven. Yeah, I'm getting the same. And look, it's steady, five volts, and it's not dropping down. So the reason why the voltage is dropping down is because there's a fault on the main logic board. And that's why when I plug in the cable right here, as soon as I plug it in, the backlight turns off. And then I have that issue with the five volts and the five volts jumps. Yep. Learn from my mistakes troubleshoot further plug in um, you know check the standby voltage going to the main logic board but then unplug that cable going to the main logic board unplug it from the circuit to eliminate that and then check the 5 volts again and see if you get the same results if you don't and you get steady voltage then you know that the main logic board is causing that voltage drop subscribe hit that bell notification for the part 3 video coming soon if this video was informative and I helped you out and you learned more troubleshooting steps, give me a thumbs up and click on the share button below to share this to anyone that may be having an issue with their Samsung TV.